The markets right now are in a spot where we keep making new record highs. They're not booming record highs, but they're still there nonetheless. Are the markets correct, or is the economic data that shows signs of a possible slowdown you know, correct? Fading price momentum has been pretty tough this year, but for myself, I go back to September. Estimates have been falling almost every single week since September last year. Uh, yeah, could we say the market stretch? Cer certainly it is. But it's largely on the heels of a Federal Reserve that is reverse course nearly 180 degrees. And we're going to have a, we're gonna have a rate cut uh, sometime this month. And in any type of security analysis, the risk free rate is a pretty important dynamic. Oh, of course, for valuations, I get it. So, so, just, so, Joe, I throw this to you. You are an economist. Is the economy in the U.S. in a situation where cutting interest rates is appropriate? Yeah, I think the uh, rate of uh, policy is too tight. The economy slowed around 1.3% growth during this quarter. And I think you're going to see that reflected in the top line. I've got 147K increase on the top line. And I'm worried about goods producing, manufacturing, leisure, hospitality, and trade and transport because of the trade conflict that is now on the margin depressing overall economic activity. So, the, uh, uh, Joe, the jobs numbers that we have been seeing have been showing slowdowns, but they are still growing. So, is it a situation right now where we can say that the U.S. economy is still in a healthy spot and it kind of justifies the record highs that we are seeing? Okay, so three things. One is the economy peaked last October. We we're past the cyclical high, so we're decelerating at an increasing rate. I think the thing that when you're watching the jobs report today, you want to watch not only the top line, you want to watch the, establish, or the, the household survey. Now, we've only added several thousand jobs in the household survey over the past few months. That suggests that the unemployment rate is bottom and it should increase over the next several months. You know, when we're talking about markets, though, bad news is good news here. You get another sub 100,000 report, you're going to see an aggressive pricing in of not just 25 basis point cuts later this month, but probably 50 basis point cuts. And I think it's the Fed driving markets, not earnings. You wait till the July 8th, July 9th and see just how compressed earnings are. We're going to be having a very different discussion in just over a week. David, I thought we were beyond the good news is bad news and bad news is good news narrative in the markets. But Joe makes it sound like we are gone right, we've gone right back and that now it's all about expectations about central bank inflation. Well, you've got benign, benign inflation. It's, and we don't live in a vacuum. You know, you've got rates in Germany that are like you know, sub-zero all the way out to 15 all the way out to 15 years. We're focused on jobs. I don't think that's really the issue. The issue largely lies offshore. 40% of S&P 500 revenue is offshore. And PMI data around the world is weak. And in many parts of the world, they're in economic contraction. I think the, the story here in the United States is actually relatively good. But with so much exposure to offshore revenue, you know, it's got to hit large cap multinationals. But, oh, okay, so David, with so much exposure on the large cap multinational side, why is it that traders in stocks have not gotten that correct in your mind? I mean, you're saying that it would be correct to factor in a more of a slowdown globally, purchasing managers indices and everything it. else. You know, but, 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 but stocks keep going higher. They keep going higher, and price momentum is important, and they're discounting mechanisms. Right now, stocks are saying that some of the concerns that both Joe and I have right now are largely going to be discounted, and they're going to get better six to nine months from now. I need, to, I need some food on my plate. We've got earnings coming up. The CEOs have done a very good job of lowering expectations for most of the year. I need some promises here. I need something. I need to know that some of these earnings estimates have to at least stabilize and start to get back on I-95 North. I-95 North. We can't keep sustaining multiple expansion without earnings at least stabilizing and at least starting to catch up to valuation. So, so Joe, David mentioned food on his plate. I would also say I need fuel in my car as well. All of those components with, with regard to food and energy as part of the inflation picture are still relatively benign. So what does that tell us about what's happening with the U.S. consumer overall in the economy here in the U.S.? Well, the U.S. consumers had a, at least a decent rebound here in the current quarter. But when you look at that report today, ignore the noise at month to month on average hourly earnings. What I do is I calculate a three-month average annualized pace. And you know, Dom, when you take a look at that, you've seen a deceleration in wage growth from around 3.4 to 2.7%.
right? So in that case, employment and wages are always a lagging indicator. What we'll want to see here going forward is, should in hiring begin to flatten out, will that cause the consumer to pull back in the third quarter? I mean, we're really coming up on a critical three to four months here in the economy. We need to see some, uh, something more than just talk on the trade truce. We want to see tensions ease in the Middle East. We got a lot of event risk in front of us. You know, and David makes a really good point. We got $13 trillion of uh, government securities yielding negative rates. I just got back from Europe. There's a very different economic discussion across the pond, and it's going to be difficult for the U.S. to avoid those headwinds. All right, so I'm going to give you the last word, David. Given the setup that you and Joe have kind of talked about, is this a situation where people should be investing still in the stock market? Look, if, if you think you have, if you're going to follow the tape and, and try to wiggle around and try to avoid the next, you know, pullback, what's going to be the dynamic that's going to get you back into the market? Is it going to be down 10, down 20 percent? I doubt it. For most investors out there, should, they should stay fully invested. And they should have some kind of asset allocation that covers all, 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 all the metrics. Right now, you've got both risk-on and risk-off assets doing well. Somebody in a balanced portfolio is wading through this pretty good.